Hello, my name is Shannon Ratliff, and I am 37 years old. It is May 1st, 2011. I'm in Whitesburg, Kentucky. I am a human resources analyst at Eastern Kentucky University and uh, ambassador of goodwill to, uh, for the Kentucky Equality Federation. I'm here today interviewing my longtime friend, Tyler Watts, for StoryCorps and uh, for the Kentucky Equality Federation's focus on growing up gay and transgendered in Appalachia. You want to introduce yourself, Tyler? Uh, yeah, I'm Tyler Watts, and I'm uh, 37 years old. Um, I am the Transgender Outreach Director for Kentucky Equality Federation. Um, I'm in the uh, medical field, um, lab tech, phlebotomist. Um, I believe that sums it up. All right. Well, then, uh, are you ready for me to bombard you with questions, then? Bombard away. Well, I think that before we, we talk too much about growing up and and get into too much uh, reminiscing because the I, the concept of transgender is so foreign to so many people would you mind defining it and just yeah kinda... yeah there's there's quite a bit of difference between some people that are transgender because it can it it kind of is broad um but for me um i'm like a straight male um, a lot of people think <clears throat> because you're transgender that that means you're attracted to the same sex as your physical appearance. As you were originally bio biologically. Biologically, correct. That is as far from the truth as it could possibly be. Not all transgender uh, people are attracted to the same sex. You know, they could be – it's it's all about being comfortable in your own skin – and your mind matching your body. Correct. It has absolutely nothing to do with physical attraction, sex, any kind of sexual attraction to another person or it, at all. So know? it could be just as common for someone to, to change from being a, a biological female to being a, a biological male, but their, their attraction may still be... Uh, for men, correct, correct. It's it's all that about is what the case with you, but that is the case. With you. Right, right. You're you're very correct on that one, and it's not. You know, again, you know, I, I'm attracted to women. Always have been, but there's some people out there that's not. It's just it's about you. It's about your body matching your mind. Has you know, it's leave the whole sex part out. Right. You know, that's basically what it is. Well, I I've known you for 27 years, which is Revealing that the we're years old. need to just stop now. Um, yeah, we're old. <laughs> but uh, I've been, I've known you since you were Tammy, since you were, since I was 10. And Ooh, I I've hate watched that you, <laughs> I know you, you always did. <laughs> I know, um, I've watched you go through the entire experience that you have been through so far. And, mm -hmm. and I know that you still have a ways to go, but um, in, in some ways. But um, I thought that I had a pretty good grasp on what your experience was like uh having seen it all and having and heard you uh having heard you talk about it and um we have a pretty open dialogue about it so i i like i said i thought i, I knew <laughs> i thought i knew something right right uh, but one one night we were we were talking and i asked you a question that sort of crystallized things for me or or at least put things into perspective uh, i asked you when you first realized that you felt like a man or a boy mm -hmm. Yeah, tell us about well, the answer that yeah, you gave me. Actually, from as far back as I can remember, I always thought I was a boy. I always related to a boy. Um, you know, in kindergarten, the, you know, the bathrooms are in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't leave the room. Right. And I do remember, I think, when my mind started questioning what is male and female, what is a boy and a girl, is like when I got to first grade... And you would have to leave the room to go to the restroom, and you always chaperoned. Right. Because, uh, you know, you're so young. And I would try to follow the boys into the boys' bathroom because that's what I thought I was. And I remember one of the teachers, you know, she was like, no, 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 you got, you have to come down here, you know. So I uh, – and I couldn't understand it. I was like, well, why am I going to the girls and all the other little boys are going to the boys? You know, I kind of felt weird. And that is the first time that I actually 
realized that I was different, that something's, something's not adding up here. Right. You know? Because, you know, as a child, you know, your parents don't go around saying, well, you're a girl. Right. You're a girl. You're a boy. You know what I'm saying? That's supposed to be natural. And it was natural for me, but I was a boy. Right. You know? And uh, so that's, that's, you know, when I really remember it hitting me. And I know I went home and, you know, I remember being very upset and nobody to talk to. Right. You know, and not even knowing what to say. Just confused. It's not exactly a question you could ask. Go home and yeah. ask your parents. Right, right. Did you ever ask ask them any never. any questions? Never, never. Um. From the time that you made that realization, well, first grade ish, mm-hmm. as you as you got older, what did you think in terms of uh, your 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 sexual identity as you as you can know it as a third grader or fourth grader or fifth grader? Or fourth grader? Right, right. Um, what did you? What did you think you were? <laughs> well, again, I always thought I was a boy. And, you know, and this is going to be really odd, but I remember I would go to bed at night and I would be like, well, tomorrow I'm going to wake up and whatever a boy is, that's what I'm going to be, you know. And I was always thinking that it was something that grew. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, w- I always thought that it was something that I would go to bed at night and at some point in my life and at some at some age – is when it would happen. Just magically. Right, right. You know, it was very weird, but I was very little, you know, and, and, you know, you're, what, five, six, you know, you don't understand. And you don't even know what sex is, period, Right. at that time. So, you know, I remember as far back as to three years old having crushes on my babysitters and being attractive, but it wasn't in a sexual way it was but it wasn't at the same time it was you got them little you know butterflies in your stomach and all giddy you know but you don't know at that age what sex even is so you can't really go that far with it it was just it was natural you know it was a nat- right. natural attraction to women so you eventually then came out as lesbian because you uh we're trying to uh, right, right. Identify <clears throat> somehow. I actually, when I came out, I, I I actually did not come out on my own. That was when I was in high school, and I guess my parents had suspected things just from actions and the way things were going, and um, they were, you know, my mom worked where it was very easily for her to tap into phone calls and figure out how to rig stuff where you could hear what's going on on the other end, you know? Right. And um, so they found out about me that way. I did not come forward to them and tell them. They found out through listening to phone conversations and so forth. And I was actually uh, pretty much, I think I was a senior in high school when that happened. Um, so, you know, it, I was forced to... Uh, come out and as far as coming out as a lesbian um you know because of my physical appearance you know and because society pretty much coerces you and labels you what they think you are and you know and because i had uh physical aspects of a woman then society and I liked women and society told me that I was a lesbian so that's how I had to relate what I was because that's what I was being told I was because you weren't straight right right so to them I wasn't straight right when did you come out to your to yourself honestly I you know I've went through many, many years of not understanding why I did not feel comfortable you know I would have a girlfriend and I should be happy, but I wasn't. And I was like, well, I have a girlfriend. I'm with a woman. Why am I miserable? Why, you know, and I was, you know, I couldn't let my girlfriend see me naked. The lights had to be off, you know, and a lot of things that, that two girls do together, I couldn't do. Right. Because it was humiliating to me. It was humiliating for me to get in the shower by myself, let alone with someone else. I wanted to do those things so badly, you know, because that's just what two people do when they're in love. Right. But I couldn't because of the humiliation, and I was fighting that on the inside. And, you know, and I couldn't understand 
what was going on. I couldn't understand what I was ashamed of because, you know, it wasn't like I was, you know, nasty or anything like that. I mean, I was perfectly fine with, uh, with my body all except the, the genitals, you know? Right. And, um, so it made it very difficult and I was actually in my late twenties, early thirties before I realized what my problem was. And I had, I had to do actually self research and, and got online and, and saw some of the things that psychiatrists were writing and articles on transgender and, you know, and I started reading it and I was like, my God, this is my life. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, Th I am transgender, you know? So there was a time that I was doing that when I can remember a time when I was uh, about eight or nine and I was saying, my God, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like, uh, you know, I was trying to figure it out, you know, and, and um, uh, so, but I was, I was, you know, I had to figure a lot out on my own because it just wasn't talked about and nobody could relate to me. Well, that was a, another thing that you said to me in the past that struck a chord with me because coming out is no easy task. And, uh, right. you, you did that as a, to your, to yourself as a, as a fifth grader, you came out to yourself or, you know, whatever grade right, you were in right. when was, you were fourth right. or fifth, um, as, as lesbian mm -hmm. again to yourself, but um, it, if, if, in my mind, I imagine you didn't get the rewards for that, that you usually get. There's a relief that comes with coming out and a, and a sudden comfort right. that you feel within your body that, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that is usually, uh, uh, makes it worth all the, all the bad stuff, uh, worthwhile. Yeah. That it's but when you did that the first and, time yeah. you came out to yourself and you finally got, uh, to that place that's supposed to be more comfortable and it was. No, it more was worse. More misidentification. Yeah, it was worse. It right. Made, it made the whole situation worse because now, not only am I not a lesbian, so I'm even more crazier than, you know what I'm saying? Because society You're was telling you, you even know, less normal. immoral, you know? Right. Right, right. So it, uh, it confused me even more. It made things so much worse. And, uh, you know, about the fifth or sixth grade, you know, is when the boobage started happening, you know? <laughs> right. So... Um, and because, you know, I would walk around with tank tops on and, you know, wear my regular clothes. And I remember being around some girls that I liked and was attracted to, because, you know, in the fifth and sixth grade, you, you start the, the sexual attraction kind of starts, you know, at that age. And, um, and I remember I was on a swing and I jumped out of the swing and when I landed, it was like, and I don't know if it was m m self consciously thinking this or if it was actually what they were laughing at right but i wasn't wearing any type of bra whatsoever and you know and they weren't big or anything but it was enough to jiggle you know what i'm saying <laughs> right. and and everybody started laughing and they were probably laughing at me falling but in my head is they were laughing because they saw something that i shouldn't have here you were hypersensitive you see, to, exactly. to that. Exactly. Yeah. So I was kind of freaked out and, you know, and I kind of took off running and, and, you know, and normally I would sit and if it was life, they were laughing about the fall. I would sit and crack up laughing with them. Right. But I was so You did confused. it plenty of times. So exactly. Oh, I'm, I'm a professional faller. I have pictures of most of them. <laughs> oh yeah, you do. <laughs> Thank you National for that. National Zoo, anywhere you want. Um, I have fell in every state in the United States. <laughs> Let me get you a t-shirt. Uh -huh. Well, so to con to sort of bring our conversation back to the, um, or to connect it to to growing up in the mountains, mm -hmm. why do you think it's important to to highlight that uh, well, growing up in Eastern Kentucky as as a transgender person? Well, because you, it, it's, it's more common now for people to come out being gay or lesbian, right. but at transgender, you know, you're, that's a 360 degree difference. There is nothing the same as being gay right. or being a lesbian has absolutely nothing to do with being transgender. So, you know, you're, you're really alone you have nobody to talk to. You're on the margins not, of the margins. You're very much so. <laughs> and you are not going to find a soul that is going to be able to relate to you or know what you're going through. 
and you're just by yourself, you know, and you're already humiliated and embarrassed because of your body to begin with, but now you're working on your brain, you know, and now you're starting to think you're crazy, you know, and you just got, and you got hormones that's coming in and, and, you know, and some of those hormones are not like a regular girl, you know, a lot of people has higher testosterone levels and so forth, you know, and literally being transgender is nothing more than a birth defect, you know, it's not a choice, it's not something that you just think of, you were born that way, your brain is wired to be that way. So when you're growing up in a place like Appalachia, where where being gay and lesbian is hid, imagine what it's like for someone that is transgender who can't figure it out. You know, I went through years of mental torment trying to figure out what was wrong with me right. and had no help. You know, I had to find this out on my own. And I have a very strong mind. I'm a very strong person. You know, I, I didn't ever have a thought of suicide. You know, those things never popped up, but there's a lot of people that do not have that strong mind, and they resort to suicidal thoughts, and because there's no one there for them, you know, and you, you know, and taking a child to a psychiatrist, you know, you're just making them feel like they're crazy, and they're not crazy. This is, your brain is so wired you, like this. You wouldn't recommend it? Uh, I would recommend, I, w I would recommend counseling, but... I would recommend finding information if you have to pull it up online, you know, find the information, start reading it first, and then, you know, and then start your counseling. Figure out what you are first before you go, because, you know, you're already tired of society telling you what you are. So you need to figure that out for yourself and then go forth with all the issues and the problems surrounded it and get help for that. Because, you know, we all have to go through canceling to do the transition. Right. You know, that's that's a must um, because children at a younger age could possibly uh, think and hear this information and be like, that's what's wrong with me. But it's really not, right. you know, so, um, you know, they want to make sure that this is your problem and this is what's going on before you start that because that's something that's hard to turn around. Right. You know, so... Um, Absolutely. Tyler, was there like an aha moment when you were online and you were working this out for yourself? I mean, was there like like you a moment of recognition? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was on um and and actually it's it's funny. It was these talk shows like Mori Povich, um uh Oprah at the time, I I saw these episodes of people that were transgender and what they were going through in their story. And I was like, that is me. Aha. That was my aha moment. I was like, that's me. You know, and I was like, this is what's been wrong with me my whole entire life. And, you know, there is options out there. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's very expensive, and, and it's sad that you can't have health insurance to cover things like this because, you know, if a man can have health insurance, a, a biological man can have health insurance to cover erectile dysfunction, and it cover that, you know, that's something that's, you know, you know, that I would feel is on the same line as cosmetically, you know, it's in their brain going to affect their brain if, if something's not working right. So mentally, you know, it's going to be hard for a man that has that problem. So they want to cover that. But here you have someone that's transgender that's having the exact same problem, the exact same issue and no help, you know, and, and it's not being covered. You know, you have to do all this on your own. So I think it's very unfair. Um, but, you know, that's just part of reality, you know, but, and there is an option out there and there is something that can be done and your if body you can, can right. And your body can match you and, you know, and it's called saving, you know, save up, start doing what you got to do. Cause you know, a few of the things is not that expensive to where you can never have it done. Um, you know, and the hormone therapy is extremely cheap. Um, so that, that portion of it's n nothing at all. And that's the main thing too, you know, so, um, but you know, there's, there's options out there and that's what makes me 
feel like I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to get through this, you know, and and I think that's what's helped me not become suicidal, you know, and and there is something out there that can change this. So, you know, that's that's got a lot to do with with how I've coped and dealt with it. Well, so back to the mountains again. What um <laughs> when you think of of the mountains and your experience there, what what words come to mind? Well, I love the mountains. I have hiked them. I have camped out above my house, uh, dirt bikes through them. You know, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And there's nothing better than climbing a mountain and standing on the top and looking at the view. And that's what's beautiful about Appalachia. And, um, you know, that's that's the sad part of all this, this mountaintop removal. You know, and not to get off the subject, but it just it breaks my heart to see all these mountains leaving. That is such a big deal to the the ecosystem, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and that's another thing that I think of is is everything that's going wrong. You know, there's other alternatives, um, you know, and... and Progressive thinking more uh, pro- versus exactly. traditional yeah. thinking. Exactly. And so, you know, I think of that, but then... You know, and, and family and friends and all the memories of growing up and hanging out and going to the lake and so forth. But then you have that other side to it where it's complete closed-minded people. You know, they are so terrified of change. They are so terrified to accept change. Do you um, think it's as much that way now as it was when we were growing up there? Um, I do. I do for the simple fact the pain my mother's going through now, um, I absolutely think it's there, <clears throat> if not more so now. You know, I don't live here anymore, but my my you know my mother does, and for the pain that she, I see her go through, and I can tell that it's embarrassment and and shame, um, and and a lot of it too has to do with she doesn't want me to have to go through bad things. And, you know, because my mom loves me and she is supportive, right? but she's having a really hard time and she has every right. I'm her child. And her embarrassment and shame is, is hard to, um, you know, to make small... it difficult to keep her embarrassment and shame of you at right. bay. So I can right, right. That. And she's just, you know, you got she's in a small office and you got that small office politics going on. So, you know, and that's another thing, small community. Everybody knows everybody, um, you know, in the morning, everybody in Hyman would know what everybody had for dinner last night. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, there's not a soul you run into. You may not hang out with them every day, oh, yeah. but there's almost not a soul you run into that you didn't know or your family knows. Right. So, and everybody talks, you know, so that's the part that I remember um, that was bothersome to me and, and really needs to change because it is, you know, they're very, uh, another thing is when you go down the road you don't know them and they'll wave at you. You know what I'm saying? They make you know everybody, you know, and they're very friendly people. Right. Um, but to an extent, you know. Well, so we've just, we talked before uh, of gender is, is, of course, something that is performed. Uh, and the idea of, well, I guess I should say, do you think that that the performance of male or or man in Appalachia is different from that performance, the performance of male outside the mountains. And, well, go ahead. Absolutely. It, it, it's almost kind of like uh, the Waltons, you know. They were the manly men, and they took care of the women. And, you know, uh, mountain folk always seem to go back to tradition, always traditional weddings um traditional baptisms it's always about tradition and keeping that tradition and it's okay to keep that tradition but times have changed and it's time to add some new tradition for the next generation that's going to be coming along you know so it's um it, it it has affected me on how i see myself as a man uh, you know, I feel like I should be that type of man. I feel like I should be taking care of my family and, and working and, and uh, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to say the woman should be sitting home cooking in no way at all, 
but a lot of mountain folks feel that way you know it it takes two people to live in this world now and that's one thing that needs to change but it's kind of caused me to be more of a more of a country boy kind of you know person mentality okay well can you uh just sort of give us some examples of what your life was like with your family back then um before you before you uh you came out right right the um, second time yeah right the second time well uh very extremely close family it was really close to my mom's side of the family because you know all of them lived here you know my grandfather uh owned a grocery store and and uh you know my uh, you know everybody lived relatively close to each other um so I was always more close to my mom's side because I was always going there and hanging. You know, my uncles were a lot, they were young. You know, one of my uncles was only three years older than me. So he was more like my brother. And, um, you know, and I was always hanging out down there riding motorcycles. And, you know, so I was really extremely close to my mom's side of the family. And me and my mom were so, so close at one time that, I mean, I could literally smother her and never leave her side. I mean, I just, I didn't want to be away from her. And, you know, my dad's dad, my dad, my grandpa, you know, at one time I was very close to him, but he died at such a, I was only in second grade when he passed away. So, you know, he was my world at that time. And I, now he, he, I was very close to on my dad's side of the family. And, um, but, it was just we were a really close family and and a lo very loving family. There was nothing that I didn't. I had motorcycles. I had go karts. You know, every single year was Disney World. And you know, what fifth grader can say they went and saw Michael Jackson in concert? You know what I'm saying? My dad literally left the hospital. He snuck out of the hospital against doctor's orders to make sure I got to that concert. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of love that my parents gave me. They wanted to give me everything they possibly could. You know, and and by twelve, I had already. Why didn't? Why wasn't I invited to that concert? <laughs> well, I tell you, I think he went through a lot of hoops just to make that one happen. Let alone get the second ticket, right? <laughs> that actually reminds me of you two things. You did get the Whitney. You did. Get I was going to say yeah. because my my next question was about your general reaction from the from people, just the public in general. Um, but it but it made me think the uh, Michael Jackson concert thing. Do you remember when we went? You were you were actually involved with one of our friends at the time. Mm -hmm. um, we dated all through high school. You dated all through high school. We were all very close friends, and, and none of us knew that the two of you were dating. Technically, we didn't right. know. It wasn't confirmed until years later. Mm -hmm. So so, the two of us, and and this the girl you were dating, and another one of our friends who was also gay, mm -hmm. but we didn't know it yet. Right. right. <laughs> went to um, Whitney Houston concert. Mm -hmm. And do you remember we sat there in Rupp Arena and there was a um, entire row, row, an entire row of lesbians in front of us. I did. And we sat there horrified by them. <laughs> we they were, were very, they were very affectionate and did not care to be affectionate right, whatsoever because, you know, they're from Lexington. They're, you would they're have used to seen this. Monsters. It's a very diverse community there. And, and this is the thing though, that kind of <laughs> bothers me to this day is we sat right there, you know. I was with my girlfriend, I know. you know. And me and her were looking at each other because everybody else were making little giggling and making little right. uh, comments and so forth. And me and her kind of just looked at each other and laughed and smiled at each other. But yet we we all contributed. We were all contributing to derogatory comments. Yes. And every <clears throat> single one of us sure was in that same boat. Yes. So how could we do that to ourselves? Exactly, exactly. What's wrong it, with so us? It, it was. Uh, that's the whole point of how society that was makes our, you think. Right, we were projecting our internalized homophobia. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, all it, over ourselves in Whitney Houston. Yeah, <laughs> you're very <laughs> correct. <laughs> yes, that was fun times. Fun times. <laughs> well, I also I've also wondered about uh, other things in high school. Speaking of of the time that you were involved in that, what had to be very confusing relationship. Mm -hmm. Did you consider that relationship uh, a lesbian relationship? No. Uh, did she, though? I don't see how she could. I, I, in my right mind, I don't see how. I'm sure 
from the simple fact because of my physical aspects and attributes that she would think that was a lesbian relationship, but in no way, shape, or form was that a right. lesbian relationship. Because again, like I said before, what what two women do doesn't happen in my relationship. It's just it's nowhere near the same. It's it's just not the same. Right. So, you know, back then we didn't know. So we assumed that was a lesbian relationship. And and but it was not. What was going through your mind or maybe say like around prom? When it when it's trying to cuz I know you you had to mm-hmm. want to go to prom mm-hmm. with your girlfriend. Absolutely. Uh It was actually very hurtful. I was very mad, uh, angry, and not so much at her because I wanted her to have that experience. You know, what my problem was shouldn't have affected her. Right. She still should have got to have that experience, and I wanted her to have that experience. The only problem I think I had with it was that the, the person she went with was somebody that was constantly hitting on her, constantly asking her out, just had the hots for her bad. And 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 she knew that... The person wasn't you, no matter what. Right. And she knew how bad that bothered me. And as a kid, you're jealous, you know? So when she actually... She could have went with anybody in that county, (laughs) and it would have never affected me, and I would have been fine. I should have asked her. Right, right. But, you know, if uh, when when it happened to be that person that she accepted the invite from, that totally is what started the entire downfall of our relationship. I felt very resentful to her, you know, and um, in my own small way, I was resentful because she was getting to do something that I couldn't experience, even though I should have been able to. Right. And, um, you know, everyone should be able to experience that. And, uh, and it's and it's going on today in 2011. Um, you know, you have a lot of places that would rather shut everything down as to allow equality. You know, they would rather burn it for everybody as opposed to letting a specific group go. participate. Right. Right. And um, so, um, but yeah, that it, it bothered me really bad. It affected me really bad. And and after that acceptance of the invite and after that going um that pretty much put it in my head that I was done with that relationship you know and it wasn't her fault at all but it right. ca- it caused me to do things that ended the relationship you know out of, out of being revengeful i guess um when when you well in the world of facebook yeah I know that there was a, a long time when you didn't have a lot of contact with people from mm-hmm. back home. Um, mm-hmm. Years and years and years of time passed. Yeah. 20. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're old. Um, <laughs> ten, 20 year high school reunion. 20 year. Yeah, let's not talk about the years. Uh, but <laughs> when you meet up with those people on Facebook, because I know you're friends with a lot of them on Facebook now. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. What kinds of reactions, if any, have you gotten from people who suddenly see Tyler Watts instead of Tammy, um, um, ask them to be their friend? Every every single one of them that has responded to me or sent a message to me has been very, very accepting, very um, compassionate and saying, you know, you look great. Um, I always, you know, I always knew you were going to end up like this, you know, you make a great looking guy, you know, and I mean, just, you know, very good comments, very, uh, um, you know, it made me feel great that I was having such a good, uh, responses and, uh, people that were, that were saying, you know, I'm really proud that you've, you know, you're, you can now be yourself, you know, and I'm glad you're happy. And then you have those few that probably the, the ones that make no comments at all, or added you, but never ever responded to any messages or anything or like that. Or they just disappeared. Right then, you um, then you know they're the ones that has the problem with it, and uh, but you know I haven't talked to them in that long, so I really don't care. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Um. Well, I I think about 
what day-to-day life is like uh, for you and has have you been affected by job searches or um or any anything in your day-to-day life yeah like i that. think i think so there's no 100 percent proof of it but you know when you get that background check and you got tammy watts popping up instead mm-hmm. of tyler watts um you know yeah it does it does make a difference and um you know they're gonna tell you that's not it but you know i've uh I've now been unemployed for two years and have 14 year experience and been a supervisor for seven of those 14 years in my field and do not even get called back for an interview period. So yeah, there's absolutely discriminatory things that are going on. And that is one thing that uh, Kentucky quality federation is trying to make uh, a change and it needs to make a change because there is no protection for um, uh, the LGBTI community at all. None. They have every right to do that. Specifically transgender. Yeah, yeah, more so. I yeah. think I think more so because, you know, I've never had any issues whatsoever before when they thought I was a lesbian. Never had any issues. Never, no, no negative comments, no derogatory. Everybody liked me. You know, never anything. But now since my transition happened, absolutely problems left and right left and right it's been awful what was the experience like i saw this experience from my my point of view um the the transition (laughs) that Mm -hmm. that everybody around you made was uh changing of pronouns and changing of names and just changing of an idea uh a concept of you Mm -hmm. period Mm -hmm. which really wasn't terribly difficult for me because you always seem the same to me it's just right, it's right. just a different name and mm-hmm. uh, um mostly <laughs> but it was still difficult for me because yeah yeah uh just remembering to say he and in t and for right, a minute right, there right uh, of course it it's not a thought to me now but i watch other people who, who go through it with you now yeah they um, catch themselves a lot oh yeah yeah and it's been inter- interesting to watch uh, our friends families who know know you mm-hmm. my family our, mm-hmm. you know, and our friends' parents try to deal with mm-hmm. with. That. I mean, like I said, uh, my dad is most accept accepting mm-hmm. him being uh, that I know in terms of queer issues. Yeah, that was in yeah. quotes. No offense. Right, um, right. Th- but he struggles with it, uh, and mm-hmm. I know that it's just not easy. What do your parents uh, call call you? T. No. <laughs> Absolutely it's still not. Tammy. Uh, exactly. And refused to call me anything other than Tammy. You know, and the one thing that upset my dad was, is I wanted, I named you. I wanted your name to be Tammy and you're taking that away from me. I mean, he was very upset, extremely upset. And, um, and he refuses to call me Tyler or T. It's Tammy because that's who I am to him. My mother's the same way. Um, you know, and we, uh. We had a conversation that that at first started out rocky, but it ended good um, about the whole story core. And, uh, you know, my mom was like, you know, why are you doing this? You're just and you're never going to change the world, you know. And uh, if you change one person's mind, then you've accomplished something. So uh, if you can save a child from committing suicide and to let them know you're not alone, you're, you know, then you've done something. So, um, they're having a hard time, my mom specifically, and, um, so, you know, it'll get better, you know, they had just gotten used to the fact that I was a lesbian, and now I'm not. (laughs) How did they deal with the fact that you were a lesbian compared to Well, at first, you know, at first I was grounded. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, naturally you're, you're grounded. And, uh, and I said, no, I'm not, <laughs> you're not going to ground me for who I am. And, uh, basically what happened was, is a friend had came over and I was getting ready to leave. We were going out to hang out. And my mom was like, you're not, what are you doing? You're not going nowhere. And I was like, you're not grounded me because I'm a lesbian, you know? And, uh, which I, I, I said gay actually, cause I hate the word lesbian. And, um, <laughs> so uh, she said, if I leave, your things will be packed when you get home. And I had already graduated high school. I graduated when I was 17, so I was already out of school. 
and um sure enough when i got home you know then my bags were packed but it was it was not be you know, I, I was not kicked out because i was gay i was kicked out because i disobeyed them right you know i there is consequences when it just you so disobey happened to be they were... and it just so happened to be the issue of why i was grounded was because of that but i was not kicked out of the house because of that and needless to say within a month and a half two months i was right back home again you know so <laughs> uh, it wasn't like it was a a forever kick out. Right. Well, you mentioned that if, if anybody's listening who who needs to know that they're not alone, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. what what would you say to a, a transgendered person in in the mountains right now growing up? Um, I, I would say get your facts together. Start doing your own research online. If you can't find it online, you know, go to the library. Uh, get any kind of pamphlets, books about it so you can start understanding yourself because in all honesty you do have to start understanding yourself because you don't at first you know it's a lot to take in it's a lot of confusion and um and after that you know start the process don't wait until you're my age you know start the process do it do it in your youth and if you can't afford you know the surgeries and so forth at least start the process start the hormones and save your money up until eventually you can because that in itself the goal that you're working for it will will help you it will start making you feel relief immediately you know and and there's a lot of alternatives out there you know i've you know the binding and things like that you know the chest binding and so forth you know it, it can cause a lot of health problems and you need to learn how to do that you know i i have two blood clots right now because of the binding and so you know, there's alternatives. Don't just do what you think you have to do. There's there's ways to get around it. And there's people out there that can help you, that actually understand, that are with you, that are just like you. And, uh, you know, I myself, I'm the transgender uh, outreach director for Kentucky Equality Federation. Uh, I'm there for, for any issue, but especially transgender. Um, and uh, the website's www.kentuckyequalityfederation.com. Um, and... Uh, I'm listed on there, and you can email me at any time, um, and you can, uh, uh, there's a lot of help out there, and there's a lot of things that Kentucky Equality Federation is trying to change and, and make a difference and get some protection, you know, because that's something that's needed. Tyler, I have a question. Um, you know, there are obvious challenges to living in this part of the country. Um, mm-hmm. Are there also rewards for you for, you know, being trans and also living in the mountains? Um, well, I, I moved and I moved because of the way things are and the way people are looked at and the, and because of there's so much people that don't accept this and they want to condemn you to hell because they're very Bible belt and, uh, which is hypocritical by the way. Um, you know, no one knows that. Um, and no one can make that decision or even say that because you're not God and you cannot speak for God. So, uh, that's actually blasphemy if I'm not mistaken. So, but you know, there's just a lot of hypocritical things going on, but as the only rewards that I have gotten is to be there to help someone else that can catch this early you know you don't want to be growing up and from the time you're five from the time you're 15 struggling by yourself and wrestling in your own mind you need to find someone and you need to get help and you need to let them help you understand what's going on so you don't have to live in that torment so you can understand and start learning who you are as a child you know, because this is natural, this is how you're born, it's not, it's not chosen, and for anybody to say you choose this is ridiculous, because why would someone want to choose a life of discrimination, of possible, uh, of being harmed, of getting fired, being denied homes, and so forth, which is absolutely legal, you know, why would someone choose that, you know, it's just, it's in, it's absurd and insane to say someone would choose that type of life as opposed to complete equality in the other 
feel, you know, in the other groups of people. So, you know, and it's not, you know, and, and just one thing I want to say to those out there that, that feel like it's derogatory, you know, that make the derogatory comments and that, that say all these things and, and make people feel like they're beneath them, that make them feel like they're wrong. You know, the only thing I have to say to those people is, is you're not educated on the subject to begin with, and you're not in that person's body. So therefore, how can you pass a judgment for something you know nothing about? And as far as I'm concerned, and I'm, and I'm not trying to be mean or rude, um, but the way I see it is, is if I look at someone passing by me, and, and I think in my head and wonder what they're doing behind closed doors and in their bedrooms, that's me putting those thoughts in, in your head. It's If you're not involved, if, you, if you're not forced to see something you don't want to see, and if you're not involved in the situation, why would you wonder what someone else, why would you wonder what your neighbor does behind closed doors in their bedroom. To me, it's perversion. You know, that act is is just perversion to me. You know, it's not the person that's like that doing it. It's your it's their own head doing it to themselves. You know, so I and you know, maybe I worded that wrong. I don't know, but I just I just feel like someone who brings those thoughts up on their own. Um, you know, why would you care if you're not involved? Why does it matter? Why do you care? The problem's with the judger. And exactly. Not the judged. Exactly. Exactly. We, I I think that uh, we we maybe talked over our time, but uh, <laughs> it's been a great deal of fun doing the interview and. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's been one wonderful. Question oh, okay, great. Um, okay. The Whitney Houston concert. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whitney, Whitney Houston and After Seven. <laughs> yeah, After Seven they opened for her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, you were obviously, you've been friends for so long, um, like, when did you make that connection that, or when did, did you ever come out to each other? I think we made the connection when we met, but we didn't understand it, mm -hmm. and then when we met this other person and this other, we had a little gaggle, a gaggle yeah, of yeah, friends, yeah. and, and, um... Everyone is slowly, yeah, everyone has slowly came out one at a time to each other, and um first chris yeah. then well you kind of and then yeah. chris and yeah. and me and then so on and so on and so on right right yeah it was just slowly one at a time we we came out and, way later uh, way way later the friend we were that adults. he was with the, the friend he was dating all through high school is now married with children and she was yeah. she was straight she's always been straight so that's yeah yeah um yeah and it, and it was a straight relationship mm -hmm. to me so you know it, it uh it, it was it was difficult, but it's very much it's very much easy to cope with if you have the correct information and the correct tools to go about how to cope with it and how to learn what there is. Because you know today, you know they now realize that it's not just male and female. DNA proves that that it's not only male and female anymore. So, um, you know. It's it's no longer choices, and there's proof of that. Anything else you want to say? No, uh, I just I, I just appreciate the uh, opportunity yeah. to to tell our story, and and really hope that people will will make the step forward so they can start feeling better about themselves, and 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 not have to hide. You know, you don't have to hide. There's always somebody there to back you and have your back. Thanks. Thank you.